following is a live presentation of CBC Sports. Hi, and welcome to Victoria, B.C. As we begin our coverage of the Ford Men's World Curling Championships, I'm Scott Russell. We're at the Savon Foods Memorial Center. Now, as everyone knows, curling is a sport which is all about building a solid foundation in the house, but this is a little bit bizarre. Uh, this rink is not yet complete. There's Tamo right now, air conditioning and dehumidification. He's trying to get this thing underway. You know what? There's drywall everywhere here. Still lots of construction going on. As a matter of fact, the organizers for the World Curling Championships didn't get in here until five days ago. The first event in the building last Friday, rocker Rod Stewart. He showed up on stage wearing, guess what? You got it, a construction helmet. But you know what the great thing is about curling and it applies to this 7,000 seater? All you really need are stones and ice. And here at the Save On Food Memorial Center in Victoria, BC, they've got both, just in the nick of time. Take a look at that, first rocks coming up. Today marks the return of Randy Furby to the World Championship stage. He has led his team here three times before. The disappointment of no medals in their 2001 debut was turned to joy the following year. In 2003, they became back-to-back -back champions in Winnipeg. After missing last year, Furby and his team are back, sights set on a third world title. From around the globe, 11 other teams have assembled in Victoria. They are a mixed group, world championship rookies, a few old hands, and the reigning Olympic gold medalists. They are faced with the Herculean task of challenging Team Canada on their home turf. Great expectations for perhaps the greatest of all time. Today, the world plays Canada's game. Beautiful Victoria, British Columbia, capital of the Pacific province. Springs already arrived on this western island. Also, the curlers don't mind that. They have a new house in which to play. The Save On Foods Memorial Center will host the Ford Men's World Curling Championships, and when the dust settles, it will. Don't worry, the ice makers guarantee beautiful conditions for the masters of the game. 12 teams begin play today, and in the opening draw, we've got a feature matchup pitting veteran Andy Cap of Germany against three-time world champ, six-time Briar champ. That would be Randy Furby of Canada. Hi, everybody. Welcome to beautiful British Columbia. The crowd's in the house and at the Save on Foods Memorial Center Championship Curling on CBC. I'm Scott Russell. Well, if you build it, the best curlers in the world will come. The people of Victoria have been counting on that, and today their dream is realized, although this house of curling was erected just in the nick of time. As I said, 12 teams will begin play today. It's the largest field ever in men's world championship curling. It's a testament to the growth of the sport across the world. The odds-on favorite has to be considered Randy Furby Sportsum from Edmonton, but as we've seen, anything can and often does happen in the sport of curling. And remember this, the reigning Olympic champion Paul Trollson of Norway is in the house. You can bet that Randy Furby has taken note of that. Let's continue to set the scene here in Victoria and join Don Whitman. Thank you, Scott. Hi, everybody. You talked about the construction delays, but there were no problems in putting the ice in. As Dave Merklinger and Hans Wuthrich have done an outstanding job, the curlers all talked about the amount of swing that was available on the playing surfaces when they had the opportunity yesterday to practice for the first time. As Scott also mentioned, for the first time ever, 12 teams are participating in this men's world championship. And this is the draw facing Canada's Randy Furby. Today he opens up against Andy Cap of Germany and then Sean Becker of New Zealand. When you look ahead, a key matchup could be taking place on Tuesday when he faces the reigning Olympic champion, Paul Trulson of Norway. In addition to the game between Canada and Germany today, it's the United States against Australia, New Zealand and Sweden, Denmark and Switzerland. We'll be updating those games as we focus our coverage on the game between Germany and Canada. As usual, Joan McCusker and Mike Harris have joined me in the broadcast booth. And uh, first of all, Joan, we'll let you talk about this fantastic team from Edmonton, skipped by Randy Verbe. 
This is the, the greatest team ever to come out of Alberta and arguably out of Canada. When they are motivated, they are so hard to beat. They watched the World Championships last year after losing to Mark Dacey. They want to get back to this World Championship and win. And we all know when they're on top of their game, they're very, very hard to beat. Well, Mike, you have had the opportunity in the past to play with and against Andy Cat. Well, that's right. And Andy is also a veteran of the World Championship play also very motivated he knew the worlds were in victoria he knew the olympic games were coming up and he managed to win the german championship for the first time in four years very experienced team the difficulty they're going to have is adjusting to the ice conditions as we know hans wittrick makes very swingy ice they're used to practicing on straighter slower ice so how will they handle the conditions today is the real question well it could be an interesting battle at the skip position today in the way the two call the game Exactly. This, there is no rookie here. These are two veterans. They both have been to world championships many, many times. Andy Cap won a silver medal in 97, also won two bronze medals in previous world championships. These are two very good teams. He will not be intimidated by Randy Furby. He has played Canada in the past and will just have to settle down and make his shots. The opening game at the 2005 Ford World Men's Curling Championship here in Victoria. Randy Furby of Canada against Andy Cap of Germany. First rocks after this. The Ford World Men's Curling Championships on CBC. Brought to you by Ford. Built for life in Canada. The Ford World Men's Curling Championships on CBC. Brought to you by Scott Paper Limited and its family of quality paper products. By Tim Hortons. Roll up the rim to win. And by the original Strauss Heart Drops. Trust the tradition. Foods Memorial Center in Victoria, the home for the 2005 Men's World Curling Championship. The opening draw, Canada against Germany. These two teams have only met twice in the past. In 2001 at the Worlds, Furby won by a score of 7-5, to five, and Cap faced Furby again in 2002 in Bern, Switzerland at the Boone Trophy competition, and Furby again emerged victorious with a record uh, with a score of 8-4, the uh, result. Germany starts the game with Hammer. And uh, Marcel Rock gets things close, underway close, for close, 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 Randy Furby fly. and his Canadian Briar champions. There were some concerns that because of the continuing construction as the ice was being installed, <laughs> that some of the dust particles might cause problems, but all credit is due to the ice-making crew and the work they have done in trying to maintain the ice. They've been scraping it, they've been brushing it, they've been sweeping it. The workers inside this new facility vacuuming yesterday, sweeping, cleaning up, and uh, the conditions as far as the air is concerned in here much better today than it was yesterday. The ice makers never had any doubt that they would be able to produce some good swing and, and uh, keen ice. I think that more of a concern after yesterday's practice was was uh, the dust in the air affecting the, the sweepers. It was hard to breathe with uh, doing uh, a lot of exertion through the sweeping and you, you'd feel it in your lungs. But today it is just a <laughs> world of difference. I don't think it's going to Ball be an first? issue. Holger Honey should move a little bit more, rubbing right? the Canadian okay. guard as he attempted to go around it. Bump it. Easy. Whoa, 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 Easy. Whoa. Clean. Whoa. Up. Whoa! Oh! Easy for sure. Marcel Rock right on target to bump the German stone out of the rings. Very quiet weight thrown by Marcel. I didn't throw it too big. Mind you, that rock's been coming down. I don't know why I have it, but... Randy Furby seem very familiar with the stones here. These are the MCA curling stones that were used at the Briar and past four briars and uh, Scott Pfeiffer actually has uh, on his palm pilot he's got all the rocks charted so they know exactly what they're throwing on every sheet here big advantage actually for for Randy Furby and his team <laughs> Holger Honey removes the Canadian stone loses a shooter in the process and now Scott Pfeiffer will attempt to draw in behind 
The opening stone that was delivered by Marcel Rock. Five. Six. I'm good. Room. Room. Maybe seven. Where is it? Seven. Six. Seven. Getting seven. better. Still room. Room still. Lots of room. At the end. Seven. At the end. Go, 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 seven. go, 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 go. Now, some of the European teams, when they practiced yesterday, were talking about the amount of swing. And uh, they are not used to having five and six feet of movement on their stones. And they had to make some adjustments. And that will continue on over the first couple of days of round robin. You'll see the European teams are used to much straighter ice conditions. And often, as we talked about in uh, the World Championships last year, will adjust the way they throw the rock to make it curl. So uh, these teams with some experience coming over to uh, Canada to North whoa, American whoa. ice uh, will adjust. It's, it's more of a, a mental uh, thing right off the top after you practice on uh, four or five feet of swing to, to adjust that you can miss a guard by a foot and still be completely buried. Oliver Axness with the run back and he removed both Canadian stones. So now Pfeiffer again will attempt to draw behind the stone that was just thrown David, by the German no second. Uh, Four. <laughs> this is Randy Furby's what? World Championship yep. record. Take a look at his yep. wins and losses. 2001, of course, was the disappointment in Lausanne, Switzerland. As a matter of fact, twice he has failed to win a world championship when the event has been held in Lausanne. I don't think that's going to be one of his whoa, favorite whoa, spots whoa, to visit whoa. in Europe. <laughs> Finish! 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 Ah! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Good shot by Axnick as he gets the hit and the inside roll. And we often talk about uh, European teams who turn the rock towards the target to get some extra curl. This German team is not one of those teams. I've curled with these uh, gentlemen in Toronto in a, in, a, in a major league, a couple of major league games, and they all throw it very, very straight. And I said, the, as Joan mentioned, the difficult thing yep. is just going to be getting used to the ice. Yeah. He does leave a corner guard, and uh, with Germany having last stone, they, they like the corner guard, give a good chance for Uli Cap to get around to the T-line and buried. We most recently saw Uli Cap, the third, in Scotland in Paisley at the Women's World Championship. He was doing commentary for Eurosport, which he has done since 2000. Drawing behind the corner guard. Well, you notice that Dave Nettowin is brushing the stone. Yesterday there was some concern in Edmonton that there had been a major dispute involving Randy Furby and David Nettowin. All you had to do was look at the calendar. April the 1st, it was a bit of a joke. Randy explains what happened. We had a little bit of fun with that. We sort of uh, had a April Fool's joke going there. A local TV station uh, got in on the act and uh, we sort of had a little fun with that. Uh, we said that Dave was off the team and he left the team in disgust and whatnot. But uh, we had quite a few calls back home. People didn't realize it was a joke, but uh, that's sort of what our team has done for a long time now. We, we, we like pulling practical jokes and that, and that was a good one. Well, it certainly had some people in Edmonton upset because they really believed that the Furby team had split up, that Nedowin had left the team. There were telephone calls, not only to the television station and to radio stations, but also to the team's website. In, in that spot, but that yeah. turn, the L turn coming in was a little straighter. So a great freeze there from Randy Furby following up uh, Uli Caps draw around the corner guard, taking away that point. The back eight foot, the German stone at the back eight foot. Yeah. Still a good chance here for the Germans. Oh, yeah. Walks around the T line oh, yeah. behind easy, the corner easy. guard. Oh, oh. Yeah. Freeze. Easy. Oh, oh. 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 Oh.
frozen up in front of the Yellowstone. And Uli Kopp delivers. Oh, well, Mike, you're familiar with his team having played them at the Olympics in Nagano in 19. Very technical, Want to run technically our sound, back? and uh, understand well, the game very well. Hey, That's a nice freeze there from and back right out. Uli. Well, then we're just rolling off. Well, if you almost get to the nose, his is going to roll a bit. Hopefully, you end up frozen. Just if you run the guard back, you either pick our yellow out. And we're really screwed, or you miss it. He's drawn open side. He's got a automatic. Scott's just wondering about throwing a 10 and getting it off of ours, but just so we're still on top of it. I like it. You can only see yeah. about three quarters of that <laughs> shot. You heard Scott's <coughs> concerns about the run back. Watch the back one, Marty. Well, well you heard Scott Piper in. Honestly, I don't think I'm going to throw enough to get the back one out. Okay. Like, because we're rolling off then. If I throw enough to get that back one out, we're rolling off. Let's go. Yeah, with perfect draw wave. If I throw enough to get that back one out, we're rolling off for sure. Okay. As part of that April Fool's joke yesterday, they got Randy Furby on the telephone, and he said, well, the guy I really feel sorry for is Scott Pfeiffer. He's had a room with him for the last five years. <laughs> so they had some people upset. Gotta go. This is on the guard. Hard, 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 hard. No. Not very close. Yep, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Go, 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 go. Oh, he just, oh, I know, I saw it. He dumped it. Oh, is it that late, or what happened to it? Well, I, we're yelling 10 right away. I thought I threw 10. I thought it was 10. So, he said it started, and I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I saw it. It's a great chance here for uh, Germany. Draw open, try to score their two points. It is important for Randy Furby's team to communicate right, with Dave Nedwin. Yep. Why, why did that rock go wrong? Did I throw the right weight? They talked about that he dumped it, meaning he got the rock curling early out of his hand towards the target, well, and so it uh, wasn't going to make the original call. But that rock also was underthrown, so they need to communicate with Dave so that he'd be able to fix that if he had to throw that shot again. Yeah. Yep. We know. Oh, Furby team's oh, hitting ability, so they would le like to get this draw to the T-line. Very nice touch. Germany lies too as Andy Cap draws to the eight. Well, he has yeah, a 31-38 have an one shot, lost uh, record here. at the World Championships. Two bronze medals in 94 and 95, and a silver in 97. <laughs> Maybe here. Maybe, yeah. I mean, that just makes the hit the draw. I think. Well, let's see. Whatever. <coughs> well, that makes a difference in how hard well, we're going to throw it. You want to throw weight? Can we I get the wall and sit shot or no? Yeah. Throw it up. No, I mean, whatever. We throw easy. The discussion is where. Team Canada wants to roll to. That's so easy. They're going to throw an, so easy, a, a takeout on the open stone, but they're looking at rolling right across and then wondering if they could still be shot stone and maybe partially buried around the other red stone. They're playing around with uh, a very, very difficult roll. At this point, they know that they're going to be giving up the two, yep. two points yep. to Germany in this opening end. Whoa, whoa! Normal. Whoa, whoa. It's all set up by a couple of nice come arounds by Uli Kapp. Put some pressure on the Canadians. So it's a wide open hit for Andy Kapp with the final stone of the first end. Germany with the hammer, an opportunity to get a deuce. This is Andy Kapp's first appearance at the World since 2001. Sebastian Stock has dominated German it's curling it's since 2002. And I think Andy would tell you too, he's been busy. He's got three kids, all under the yep. age of four. Hot. So taking yep. a little bit of time away from curling. Hot. Yep. Hot. They want to save Hot. the shooter Hot. here Hot. after making okay. contact with Whoa. the Canadian Hot. stone. Hot. And they do. 
So it's a deuce on the opening end for Germany as they jump on the board against Team Canada on the opening draw of the Ford Worlds in Victoria. Well, a good start on this opening draw for Germany as they get a deuce with Last Rock Advantage to jump in front of Team Canada. And as Joan pointed out, the end set up by a couple of good come arounds by Uli Kapp. This German team has played a lot this year, more than many of the European teams that are here. They've played about 100 games. So they have had a busy schedule, and of course, their intent is to qualify for the Olympic Games in Italy next year. This team was coached for many years in the 90s by Keith Wendorf, uh, who was taught them about training and scheduling and, uh, and very, very focused and uh, brought them to that silver medal performance in 97. And uh, they've been together for a lot of years. This is a very, very strong team. Okay. Holger Honig's initial offering on this second end comes to rest at the top of the four. Furby is ignoring it, calling for a corner guard. Well, no surprise really from Randy, no matter what the score is, but certainly down two. <coughs> he's forced to throw this corner guard. You talk about motivation. The Andy Caps team, it's almost, I think they would argue, you could argue that they were didn't have much motivation after that uh, 97 <laughs> World Championship performance. And... Uh, they were very, very focused. They, they knew, A, again, that, that the Worlds were in Victoria and the Olympics were upcoming, and uh, that, that is why they worked extra hard this past year. Uh, they were, call it, distracted by real life. They had just had mentioned Andy and uh, his wife have three, three young kids, and that's what happens when you start getting a little bit older. But uh, nice to see them back here at the world stage. They know that they had to play better to beat Sebastian Stock, who has been dominating Germany in the last number of, of world championships. And... And that's what it takes. You get one good team that's uh, starting to win all the time. You know you have to do, you have to work harder than they do uh, to give yourself a fighting chance. Good shot there as well by Holger Hone. Just to put that rock tight to the rings and covering shots. That's, that's as good as it gets. Center line. Marcel Rock attempting to come down to the top of the stone. Small on tap. the forefoot. Coming down. Wait, it's not bad. No, 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 no. Still there. Whoa! Ooh. That boy, Marty. Yep, nice yep, 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 yep. Excellent shot by Marcel Rock, freezing right on top of that German stone. Well, In you. other games, the United States, Pete Fenson off to a 2 nothing lead over Hugh those. Milliken yeah. of Australia. Sweden, Boston. Eric Carlson leading Sean Becker of New Zealand, 1-0, and... Andreas Schwaller of Switzerland leading Johnny Fredrickson of Denmark by a score of 1-0. All those games after one end of play. Left-hander Scott Pfeiffer with an opportunity yep. whoa, to whoa. get rid of the two red stones out front. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, on this second end, when Cap put his He's first stone in the rings, yep. Randy Furby played the corner guard. Furby likes to have a lot of rocks in play, and Andy Cap anticipated that would be the case in this game. Uh... I think so because I, I think they really try to, to go aggressive for us to put us under pressure, 
and we will see. We can we can play aggressive as well. Yes, they're uh, quite comfortable with stones in play. Sweeping this to close the port off. It doesn't looks like there's room to get through. Center line. Very makeable port yep. here for Whoa. Scott Pfeiffer. Center line. Yep. Whoa. Whoa. Off. Off. Yep. Yep. Ah. He's going to ah. just rub the stone closest to the center line. And they just missed the call on that stone. That was a sweeping nice call. Wanted to go. Just rubbed the outside of that port. That was a, it was a staggered port, as you said, Mike. There's room, but you knew that when it it yeah. breaks, when it starts to curl, no. that you don't have a lot of a lot of room for error. You know, a big influence on German curling, provided by a Canadian, Keith Wendorf, who reached the final of the World Championship in 1983, losing to Ed Wernick. And then Keith went on to to work for the German Curling Federation and really develop curling right through the the 90s. Uh, worked with many many teams and now has been hired by the World Curling Federation. He he's just a very very good player and uh, dedicated to the development of the game. This time the port is there, coming the other way. And we we talked about this at the Briar too. When the ice is so swingy, positioning the guards, it's you know, we play on straighter ice, you can say, let's just throw a guard anywhere on this line. And when their ice is so swingy, you have to decide how tight you're going to take, how tight yeah. you'd like to throw the guard, and then take ice accordingly, because the last four or five feet of travel, the rocks will curl so much, and you can lose the line so easily. Very, very difficult to be precise. And that is what you said in the opening, too, Mike. That's, a, that's the, the thing that this German team does not have the experience with. That's a, go, the go, downfall go, go, coming go, 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 into go, go, go. such swinging ice that they're not Hard. used to. Hard. Randy Furby Hard. trying to come Hard. through that Hard. narrow port out front, trying to come down Hard. and tap Hard. Stones Hard. back Hard. and he just gets through and Canada will lie too. Great brushing by all three members of that team to hold the line on that rock. They just barely got to pass the guard on the center line. I had no business getting by. I don't know why you're hurting <laughs> I had no one, business man. getting by. Watch this, how close it is. It Very well swept. Double available, though, for the Germans. You see those two yellow stones? Okay. Yeah. And that is why Dave Nettowen was working so hard to remove the German stone completely from play because this double is is very makeable here for Uli Cap. We're looking at the intern for a moment. Now they're going to throw the out. Need to hit less than half to stay. Actually, will spin buried too, more than likely, if they make the double. Will he get through the hole? Yes, and he's got. Well, he won't remove oh, the Canadian stone. It will it remain will shot there. at the back of the eight really? foot, and it's really well protected. Overswept. And that's a break for Canada. A chance to come around some of those guards and lie, too. Well, I'm worried about just sitting here and giving him a flop. It'll bury, though. I know too well, the same thing. The draw Seven. attempt by Randy Furby with his Pull final in. stone of this second end to lie Eight. two. Line's good. Just Whoa. fine. Eight Whoa. nine then. All there. Line's good. Eight. Close. Coming down. Yep. Yep. Whoa. Whoa. Just for line. Oh, line's good. Whoa. Look Sit how down. close oh, he came down. to the guard again. They, they didn't want to sweep that one. They called eight the whole way, which is that back four weight. Give the chance for Germany to get out of this end by giving them something to freeze to. 
da noch einen rein, musst du legen an sich. Ja, okay. Den kannst du immer noch mal spielen. Shoot. Ich habe mehr, er hat einen ziemlich aus. Äh, Uli, vergiss es. Ja, ja. Wie die spielen, das kannst du vergessen. Okay. So, ja. Gut. Ja, aber haben wir haben die Einzige, wie es ist. Ja, aber ich habe gesagt, das ist. Es gibt keine Möglichkeit, dass ich das gehen kann. Es gibt keine Möglichkeit. Nein. Er hat es nicht. Talking about Andy and Caps Ice Call. Ein extra 6 Inches of Ice, at least, from what Randy Furby took. Ein bisschen weniger heute. Ja. Da geht's. Ein bisschen mehr. Well, Andy Cap made his first appearance at the Worlds in 1989 as an alternate. As a skip. 1990. He made his debut in Basterus. Very good. Very good. Let's go. Very good. 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 Not enough to get there. Second shot. They waited a long time for that rock to curl past that outside guard, and the sweepers weren't allowed to really work on on getting it to the button. Still a good shot. It is very. Well, we can draw down ours right now. Oh, we open it up and bring the double to the outside guard. Yeah, that's right. I don't mind it. Tight scoring area. They're looking uh, how to what deal kind with of these stones. They're going to play the double. Bumper? Well, we're playing this turn? I would say the intern. The out turn? In, I was thinking the intern, but. Across the face? Yeah, because there's not much room here. Very sharp angle. Okay. Or do you like easy? Maybe easy with that. Well, Come in off. bumper's not bad. I mean, I mean, you still can hit something Shooter here. Can yeah. right there. All right. Sets, I don't know. The problem is there's not a lot of room to draw. How, how to and score bumper. multiple points. Because we don't need a we don't need a lot of speed if we hit that right, eh? Yeah. Well of course that's always the objective with last rock is to no get less. more than a single point. Nail it. There is a chance that Canada, trailing two nothing, could get three on this second end. Bumper, yep, bumper please. up! Bumper up! Yep, please! Yep! Yep! Hard! Whoa, Hard. whoa! Working oh, to come in off the top go, red, go. onto the other red, sitting in the four. Go, 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 go. How far go, 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 back will they move it? Not quite go. far enough. Canada lies go. two. Dude, just need a little more weight, eh? No, you can sleep behind the feet. Here it does. Scott Pfeiffer didn't want to sweep that stone. Way. The old rule yes. was that the front ends were not allowed to sweep behind the T line. And they've changed the rules this year, where the, uh, if it's a continuation of play, okay. Okay. The, uh, the front end can continue to sweep behind the T line. And Scott okay. Pfeiffer was afraid to sweep that one. He thought he didn't know the rules there. And Marcel Rock reminded him we that can he sweep could our sweep. Own rock now, but we still can't sweep. We it. It's <laughs> Canadian rules now for sweeping back there, other than the skip and third. Okay. They changed it this year. And that's it's important to be up to date on the rule book. Well, and it, they've been to Worlds before, and you, you're schooled the very first time the Canadians go to the World Championship International play because we're so used to being able to sweep our own rocks behind the D-line. And it's a big no-no up until this point and where they've changed the rules. So uh, it's good that this has happened very early in the competition. They'll be able to, uh, to review that with the team. Yep. Out turn freeze is still available. No line though right now. What a good break. They were sweeping that. They thought it was light. Actually, that had enough weight had they gotten by. Oh. Turned out into a turned into a very good spot. Well, nee. well we can run this one on there for three. Sweepers really wanted to sweep that one for weight, and you could see it redirected well, on that outside guard. Two redirections okay, off the sir. outside guard yeah. and off the Canadian Good stone on the edge yeah. of the eight. Going to try to pick. Play the skinny. Yeah. Make the thin double. Because we're shot, right? So 
Even if we miss it, we still go score one, but. This is a tough shot. I like the I like the the rationale though, and that is they don't they pick don't have anything to lose right now. They're shot yeah, stone, mean, so they're gonna try to pick the stone I hit them, I can off. See it's probably too much for that double, anyways. Probably. Yeah. And uh, Randy talking about playing it thinly enough to actually get the other one too. That's an almost miss to uh, to make that double. But if they pick their own out, they've got two points and uh, mission completed here in the second end. But there is the possibility for more than two as Nedowin delivers the final Hard stone back. of the second end. <laughs> Trying to pick the red stone oh. belonging to Germany out of there. Oh. He's going to get a rub out front. Holy. Couldn't get past the top guard, so it's only a single point yeah. Holy. for Team Canada on this second end. Through two, it's Germany on top by one. to the Save on Foods Memorial Center in Victoria. End number three about to get underway. You know, there are some Canadian curlers who regard winning the Briar as the ultimate goal in curling and that the world championship is somewhat anticlimactic. Randy Furby does not agree. No, absolutely not. It's, uh, you know, it, it's maybe not as big event, but uh, we're wearing the, the, the flag of Canada on our back, and that's the most important thing you do in curling. Uh, we're at the World Championships. We want to become world champions again. We don't want the, the summer to uh, reflect on us on the golf course saying Canadian champions. We want to be called the world champions, and we, we, we've got about 12 or 13 games left, and we're hoping to do that. When he talked about 12 or 13 games, he'd uh, like to get into the 1-2 page playoff game and the page playoff system introduced this year for the first time at the World Championships and uh, win that game and automatically move on to the final a week from tomorrow. Nice shot. Atta boy. That's just a great attitude finish, displayed by uh, Randy Furby and that is been developed because he has lost world championships before and there is nothing worse. I talked to Dave Nedowin actually uh, two days ago when we arrived and he said I don't think it would there is anything that was worse than losing that world final in 2001 in Lausanne. He said losing the Briar final was actually easier than that loss at Worlds and uh, that's how this team feels. And Good on them for thinking that because they, uh, if you can't get motivated to play in a world curling championship, there is something wrong with you. We're attempting to come around the uh, Canadian guard and instead they raise it into the rings. They're actually playing it very, very tight and hoping to rub that uh, guard just like they did in the first and they rolled their shooter into the rings. But uh, the danger of doing that, of course, is exactly what we see there. You bump your opponent straight back into the forefoot. A little tight. Marcel Rock was providing some words Two, of encouragement three. to David Nedowin between ends. David was really Two. upset with his final up, stone and his inability to chip out the yep. German Rock to get more than a single Ooh. point. And Marcel was saying, don't worry about it. He's, you made a great shot with your first stone Touch of the end. Tight. Sorry, well, Dave is a, a perfectionist, and he, he is his own worst critic. Um, he's very, very hard on himself when he doesn't make shots. He feels the pressure of this... Uh, this great team oh, ahead of him all. that he should be making every Thank shot. Through two ends, the Germans have an 86 to 80% advantage, and David Nedowen is the low man at only 56%, and that's a rarity. Well, he's a lot of time to change that, but he's struggling with his outturn right now. We saw an outturn underthrown in the first end, and that last one also tight out of his hand and never had a chance of getting by the guard. He actually could have missed the guard by four or five inches and still made that shot, so he really wasn't close on either of those outturns. We'll watch that as the game goes on. Well, that could be a costly miss for Holger Honey, the 34-year-old optician from Fusen, who is the German lead. Six. Five. One. Six. Seven. Nope. Small bump. You're in. Go around. Go around it. Yep, yep, oh, yep. Right. Hard. Go, 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 go. Hard. 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 That's well by the guard. Hard, 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 hard. Go, 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 go. Now trying to, to go around that rock in the forefoot, knowing that it was going to come nowhere close to burying. Yep. And gives Germany now a big target to shoot at. 
the second time Scott Pfeiffer's left an intern way wide. He did the same thing in the first end as well. So maybe a stone issue. So an opportunity hey. for Oliver Axnick to remove both hey, Canadian rocks. Whoa. Whoa. Great hitters, whoa, whoa, whoa. Germans. Good hitting team. Go Into the pocket. And a double kill for Axnick. Germany lies one. Checking the other scoreboard down. in the third end, it's Fenson of the United States leading Australia 2-0, New Zealand 3-1 ahead of Bumper. Sweden. That's a bit of a surprise. Whoa. Switzerland Please. is leading Denmark 2-0. New Zealand with a big three after yep, giving up yep. the Damn. first point of the game on the opening end. That was a steal, by the way, for Sweden. And then Sean Becker and his mates came back with three on the second. Yeah. We'll talk about this as the week goes on, but uh, the Swiss are one of the teams that are going to be in the hunt for the playoffs at the end of the week. Olympic bronze medalists from Salt Lake City. Yeah. And uh, you know, any team that beats, uh, beats uh, Paya Lindholm, you have to think, is pretty good as well. So the Swedes came in. Although we don't know them as well, you have to think that the talent is certainly there. Yeah. And we talked about how Randy Furby teams <laughs> knows knows these rocks, the set of rocks that Scott Pfeiffer has a book on all of them. They've played with them many times in the last number of Briars. Uh, one of the bad things about having that kind of experience with these rocks is that you anticipate a huge amount of curl. And so far in this game, we are not seeing the movement that we're used to with these rocks at the Briar. And it might be fooling them right now that uh, the rocks are not Bumper. curling Bumper. quite as much as what they're used to. Well, yesterday there Bumper. was much more curl Bumper here down. than there is today. They had the opportunity for the first time to practice on this ice Just yesterday at yeah. 1 o'clock. Yep. Great shot, Randy Furby. Here we go, Germany will play the double peel. Give up. Why did we give up? I didn't give up. I went around the rocks. Well, nice. Dave stood up and nice he's sir. walking back already. Really? Yeah. No, he swapped the rock behind the guard. Because, yeah, because I was yelling. <laughs> Good yell. I was talking to Randy Furby at the Canada Cup yeah. about uh, Oh, oh. Men's curling oh, and nice, how nice. you call a spade a spade hey. and uh, when they have an issue they they put it on the table. There is no uh, no fooling around. That's a great shot. A better result than they had initially planned as they uh, get the two guards and also get the shot stone. Oh, well, that that was always there for them. That double that field just run the second one straight back. But the side legs on. Good result, as you said, Don. But as I was saying, Randy Furby talking about when we have an issue, we talk about it. And when they're not afraid of uh, hurting each other's feelings. And we were, and I was saying about how in, in women's curling, I think it, it's it, it's not the same. I think there's a lot uh, more things taken personally. And this this team, Randy Furby teams, what's set on the ice and the way they deal with stuff is never taken away uh, from the ice. Because un, un, you know, unlike what they did to that. Uh, that radio station in Edmonton <laughs> saying that they were fighting and they're not getting along. This team gets along very, very well, and they deal with the issues on the ice. Of course, in case you missed it, that was the April Fool's joke that the team played yesterday. Oh, easy. It's a nice, comfortable end here for Team Germany. Was that a cup? Yeah. A couple of mistakes from Team okay. Canada, letting them out of trouble with the miss by Scott by prolonging a double. And a great shot by Uli Kapp to double peel and run back. Something about the release and how they're throwing the stone and whether they're putting active handle on it, how much rotation they're putting on it. Bumper up! Yep. So yeah. they played very well as German team in the 1997 Real World hard. Championship final. And Joan, you'll recall this because that hard. was the year that uh, Sandra Schmerler and uh, your on, team Dave. won the uh, Women's World Championship. It was a score of four on the seventh end by Pea Lindholm of Sweden. Germany was leading at the time by a score of 2-1 that resulted in the 6-3 final for uh, Sweden. 
of uh, Paya Lindholm of that World Championship stood on oh, his head. He was second. unbelievable in the playoff games, beating Kevin Martin yeah, in the sudden death semifinal. Uh, and again, a game that Canada dominated and then Lindholm making perfect shots, perfect freezes to uh, win that game over Canada and then playing very well against Andy Kapp in the <laughs> final. Well, we're not at all surprised by some of the excellent shot making we've seen already in this game from the German team. Even though they finished with that one and six record at the Olympics in Nagano in 1998, they were in every game. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's every every round Robin Inc. has a team that has hard luck throughout. We've seen it at the Scott. We've seen it at the Briar teams that are in games early in the week, don't happen to win, and then they just okay. get on that uh, landslide going the wrong way, and and uh, that's what happened to Andy and his team in in uh, in Nagano. <laughs> Here's a good chance for uh, Dave Nettowin to play this out turn hit again, as you said, Mike, that perhaps he got going. Watch to see how much it curls, yeah. Yep. Yep. Whoa. Looks good. Yep, yep. Hard. Hard. <laughs> The important thing here is to save the shooter to make the attempted blank by Andy Cap more yeah. difficult. And the Germans do have the ability to throw the big hit weight. And Andy Cap will uh, hold nothing back here. A lot of expect a lot of speed and a lot of rotation. Well, in addition to oh, his yeah. world championship appearances and his trip to the Olympics in '98, Cap twice has competed in a World Junior Championship. As a matter of fact, back in 1987, when the World Juniors were held here in Victoria, he was the skip of the team that finished with a five and five record. Randy's uh, broom is bothering Andy. The attempted blank yep. with the final stone of end number three by Andy Cap. Easy, Sauber. Sauber. Okay, okay. It looks good. Sorry, I don't know where he was looking at. <laughs> <laughs> that was Uli Cap. <laughs> <laughs> a good reaction from Uli Cap. It's a blank. Germany holds last rock advantage to four. Andy Cap and Team Germany retain last rock advantage into end number four as the result of the successful blank on three. Two one, Germany leads Canada, a deuce on the opening end. Canada with an opportunity to get a couple or maybe more in the second, but David Nedowin racked on a guard and as a result, a single point. And that's the reason we're at two one with Germany leading Canada playing the fourth end of this opening draw at the 2005 Ford World Men's Curling Championship here in Victoria. Well, definitely a great start for Germany. A uh, chance Lovely. that opening two and a chance to be able to blank last and be very comfortable. Canada knows they're, they're going to have to make more shots to be able to get their, yeah. their points back. Well, as we play this fourth end, we can tell you that there is breaking is news cool. now, and we go to CBC News with this report. And welcome yeah. back to Victoria as we continue oh, our coverage of the 2005 Ford World Men's Curling Championship, the opening draw. Canada trailing by a score of 3-1 playing the fifth end. Canada with last <coughs> rock advantage on this fifth end. The stone in the top of the floor belonging to Germany. Your broom stops every time it hits it. What is that? His gripper. He basically well, melts, melts the ice every time he steps. It's got to go.
Marcel Rock and David Nedowin doing a job on the ice. There apparently was something on the ice that was causing a concern. It was coming off a gripper. I think one of the, the German players has a, a gripper that's making marks on the ice. And we've talked about this also in the past with arena yeah. ice that uh, those little bits. This one the other way, Scott. Well, you couldn't because that one's there. <laughs> on the opening end with last rock, Germany scored a deuce. Canada came back with one in the second after blanking the third. Andy Cap drew the button against four in the fourth end. And not an easy draw. There were three Canadian stones around the button. He had to uh, get a good piece of the button with his final draw, and under pressure, he delivered. Let's take a look at the final stone. They had called a timeout to discuss other possibilities. The final analysis was this was the only shot. Just a slight rub off the Canadian stone at the top of the button, but almost perfect weight for Andy Cap as it came to rest with about three quarters of the button underneath the final stone for a score of one. A great save by Andy Cap on that end. He got into trouble early with a miss by, by Oliver Axnick and uh, Canada was all over Germany. The wonderful save shot by Andy Cap to get their point. Let's just do this then. Actually close it, yeah. You can't have that. Yeah, rock by Uli Cap just second, did not man, curl well. enough. The they were waiting. That side is your lead, right? okay, yeah. yeah, every time he steps, he's making those marks all the way down the there. Yep. I don't know if he's got a different gripper or. or huh? Well, the problem apparently is with Holger Honey's gripper that uh, is causing problems on the playing surface. Okay. And that's an uncomfortable conversation to have with your opposition, is, uh, pointing out something that you feel is, is faulting with the equipment. Well, we're already on it, so I'm gonna try and hit it thick. Relax, Randy. I don't know if it's just me, but this uh, Canadian team just seems uh, very uptight today. And not as relaxed as we're used to seeing them. Well, I think yep. it's safe to say, Mike, that any time that we've watched uh, Randy Furby's team, they do not like uh, playing poorly. And, uh, you know, Randy will make no bones about it. That's what I said earlier in this telecast. He, he will call a spade a spade, and if somebody is not playing well, he'll be the first guy to point it out. He will show his unhappiness to his teammates. That is uh, one of his trademarks. He will now stop talking to people when he'll, he'll get upset. And... Uh, the only thing that will appease him is if Team Canada starts making a few more shots. So one of the problems is they usually play pretty good all the time, so <laughs> they don't seem getting very upset very often. Germany now lies three. A lot of pressure right now on, on uh, Team Canada. Oh, that's a great shot that by Uli. The, the, the Christmas tree, the half and half kind of gourd coming into the to the rings. Right the nose? Yeah, pretty much. Well, Randy Furby, as that uh, graph indicates, hasn't missed many. You compare his numbers with those of Uli Cap, who is the German third. Good numbers for Uli as well, 88%. Now, I'm not gaining a whole lot with Randy Stones right now. And just watch where these two guards Spin end up. Spin the middle. Spin the middle. Okay. The one stone will spin almost full 12 foot. Second shot. Yeah, still a good situation for Germany. Chance to hit in lie three. They'd love to force Randy Furby into taking a single point here in the fifth. Okay, hit and stay. Hit and stay. Okay. Hit and stay. Well, expectations going into a world championship for Canadian teams are always so high. A lot of Canadian curly, curling fans forget that. Uh, 
these European teams are playing much better than they did, say, even six, seven years ago. And the, and the, and the, and the, usually the teams you play at a World Championship come into the Canada game very relaxed because they know that Canada's going to win a good number of games. And if you happen to lose one to Canada, you're not really giving up anything. But if you happen to ever beat the Canadians, it's a big jump on the rest of the field. So quite often the, the teams you're facing, if you're Team Canada, are very relaxed when they play against you. Well, Andy Cap was saying earlier he's looking forward to opening against Canada because it gives him an opportunity, if he wins, to get off to a great start and a lot of confidence going into the balance of the draw. And he said if they lose, no big deal. They're just trying to get used to the ice. The other thing about playing Randy Kirby in the first draw is they're not used to the ice either. And we've seen it at the Briars over the past few years that their team, Randy Kirby's team, gets, seems to get better and better as the week goes on. With the, with the intern. Okay, then... Because I'm, I'm going to play the role, basically. Yeah. Yeah, well, then we could do that. Okay. Okay. They're talking about playing the double and the role. So Watch coming roll, in right? and moving this know. rock across. Kind of wait, this way, you get rid of both of those red stones, and the shooter will hopefully roll, exactly. roll over here yeah, somewhere. Yeah, well we're playing the double across the face, eh? Yeah. 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 Across the face the roll, is the back one. So it's like three quarters. This would be getting a two out of nowhere here if uh, Dave Nettle was able to make this double and roll buried. Whoa, 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 close, 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 close. Marty, Marty. Well, he only catches a piece of the shot rock moving it even deeper back to the button. And the problem with that is now <laughs> Dave Nedowin's going to be faced with the draw to the button if the Germans are able to make yep. a decent guard. This is the fifth time that a world championship event has been held in the province of British Columbia. 1966 was the first, the men's world in Vancouver. In 86, the women played their world championship in Kelowna. In 1987, the men were again back in Vancouver. And in 1998, it was a mixed competition, the men's and women's worlds in Kamloops. Volume number three, oh, tight guard. Pretty good line. Very nice shot. Well, David Nedwin, as you said, is now faced with. Well, probably dry. A draw to the button? Oh, you think? I think so. Yeah. He could try to flank yeah. this end as well and run back the yellow guard. That was a consideration before deciding let's, let's go for the they're both good. I mean they're tough, but the safer shot. Whatever you like. Opportunity to blank would be playing the raise. And the draw, of course the outturn draw is no blank opportunity. And this is yeah. not an easy job. This is not a gimme. Well, he's faced with almost the same situation as Andy Cap had on the previous end, although he's only drawing against one. But he has to get a piece of the button and a good chunk of it to score. Tight ice they've taken Line's compared to what the Germans have been taking. Andy's Line's been dead. almost out to the middle of the eight foot. Get it here. <laughs> Final stone of this fifth end, Canada. <laughs> trying to score. Got to go. Hard, hard, hard. Go, 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 go. Will they be able to get it there, or is it going to come up short? What a beautiful shot by David Nedowin. That was but all brushing. Well, obviously, for a moment, I thought they uh, were going to ask for a measurement, but it was good enough for a single point. And it's a one-point game through five. Canadian champion Randy Furby having his hands full with Andy Cap of Germany trailing by a point after five ends of play. Sweden and Eric Carlson really having a struggle against New Zealand's Sean Becker. 
And with the final stone of end number five, Carlson, the 22 year old skip, has just enough to pick up a single point. It almost looked as though the stone lost its handle as it came sliding into the top of the four foot, but it was good enough for a single point. And it's now a 4 2 game. New Zealand leading the big end, the second end, where the New Zealanders scored three. 4 4 now, the United States and Australia. And Switzerland has scored three consecutive steals en route to a 4 0 lead over Denmark through five ends of play. Our feature game on this opening draw. Andy Cap of Germany leading Randy Furby of Canada by a score of 3-2 after five. 1-1. 3-2, Germany leads Canada through five ends of play, the opening draw. And as you pointed out, Mike, one of the problems that Team Canada might have on this opening draw, adjusting to the ice conditions, that seems to be a problem uh, many times at major events for Randy Furby, the first draw. Well, it's not only Randy Furby team, but all the teams are kind of in the same boat. And as we've seen, Randy team with so much experience is able to adjust better than most of the teams at an event like this. But in the first draw, all the teams are on equal footing. So Andy and his team, Andy Cap and his team have done a great job being playing aggressively, getting lots of rocks in play. And of course, there was a one great save we saw in the fourth end when they were in trouble. Andy was able to make the big save. Well, both skips came up with big draws on the fourth. It was Andy Cap of Germany. Look at the three stones around the button. He had to get a good chunk of the button and it stops just in time for a single point. And then on the fifth end, an excellent draw by David Nadewin. Oh, he, he was unhappy to have to throw this stone after missing his first rock, but this is all the sweepers. You know how much I talk about the brushers making that shot? Well, you gotta thank Marcel Rock and Scott Pfeiffer for dragging that stone right to the button. And Marcel Rock stayed with it right to the finish, and it's a one-point game as a result as David Nettowin draws the pot with the final stone of end number five. End number six, Canada trailing by one when we return. The Ford World Men's Curling Championships on CBC. Brought to you by Karcher. You'll look for things to clean. By Scott Paper Limited and its family of quality paper products. And by Tim Hortons. Roll up the rim to win. World Curling Championships for Men, sponsored by Ford at the Save On Foods Memorial Center in Victoria, British Columbia, after five ends of play, 3-2 for Germany over Randy Furby of Canada. Here is two-time world champion Pat Ryan. Won it once in 1989 when he was a skip from Alberta. 94, he was with Rick Folk from British Columbia when he won that world championship. 12 teams, Pat, in the Worlds this time. What does that say about the growth of curling and popularity? Well, it says that the Olympics is obviously having an impact as well on uh, on curling and how we're running the world championships. The more teams, the more countries, the better it is for the sport. The way That's the way I look at it. You know, it's always the case that Canada comes into the world championships as the odds-on favorite, uh, as somebody would have to be a giant killer to beat them. And yet Randy Furby looks like he's in a tight match with Andy Cap here. Is that symptomatic of what happens at the Worlds? There's just not a lot that separates teams anymore. I mean, Furby's obviously the probably the top team in the world. Uh, I don't think you could argue that right now. But there's not a lot that separates any of these teams, and, uh, and anybody can beat anybody at any point in time. And the first game here on the ice for them is always iffy. Any, any team walking into an event like this, first game is always feeling out the circumstances, getting to know the environment. And uh, Germany's obviously come to play, and they're, they're doing a good job of it. I don't know if they'll hang on for the whole game against these guys, but uh, it's making it very interesting for the crowd here. Pat, Randy Furby was a teammate of yours for so many years, and. Uh, are you amazed at all as his, uh, at his longevity and the fact that the team has been at the top for so long? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Because Randy was thinking of packing it in probably eight or nine years ago, and uh, here he is. But you know, once you're on top, it, it, you can't really uh, step out of it. So uh, he's going to be in the game for a few more years. Uh, he's not going to get to quit. <laughs> he's going to have to keep playing. What about you? Might we see you back at the World Possibly. Uh, got a great young team right now and we're uh, obviously in in the hunt for the Olympic uh, spot next December so 
Uh, we have to see what happens there. For me, if, if we win, then my career extends a little bit longer. And if we don't, then I'll, I'll be doing some thinking. Pat, thanks so much for this. And uh, all the best of luck to you in getting back to the World Championships. Thanks, Scott. Nice to be here. Yeah, there you go. Pat Ryan, two-time world champion. Just a reminder, coming up after the draw today between Germany and Canada, we'll have a special edition of Calling All Canadians. Uh, you can reach Randy Furby, every one of the five members of his team, including the fifth player, Dan Holloway Chuck. Uh, that's at Calling All Canadians at cbc.ca. It's your chance to connect with perhaps the greatest curling team ever in Canadian history. Calling all Canadians coming up after the draw today. Don? Yes, that should be interesting, and I'm sure there will be a few laughs in that session with the Randy Furby team. The number of laughs might depend on the outcome of this particular opening draw, however. Canada trailing by a score of 3-2. Scott talked with Pat Ryan about the upcoming Olympic trials December 3rd to 11th at the Halifax Metro Center Pat Ryan one of two teams from British Columbia the other Jay Peachy of New Westminster Of course the Olympics take place in Italy Torino The 10th of February the opening ceremonies curling begins on the 13th Germany now lying two as the shot by Holger Honey comes to rest at the back of the four these are the teams that will be <laughs> participating in the Olympic trials in December that is a very Eight, solid nine, field. 10 11 the latest edition Glenn Howard he got in as a result of uh, Kevin Martin getting his spot through the Canada Cup in Kamloops he defeated Randy Furby in the final and that meant that Glenn Howard who was number two in the uh, CCA rankings grabbed the final spot they've been having some problems at the Canadian uh, end of the ice uh, where the where the coaches are sitting with some of the the shoes and they've been switching shoes and now Scott Pfeiffer is going back to a, a different shoe it's not they it's just Scott Pfeiffer that's uh, switching his uh, sliding foot uh, I don't know what the problem is with the original shoe he did he did switch it during the uh, the end the break between ends and now is going back to his uh, original shoe and that's what he's doing right now and um, Switching back, he, he took this shoe off during the commercial break at the end of the end, and now is going back. And of course, it's uh, Scott Pfeiffer's turn to throw, so he had to make the uh, shoe change and then make his way down to the far end. Hey, Scott. Sorry, boys. Came out like a rocket. Talking about his trailing shoe, actually. Toe, I think toe was coated on one of his shoes and the other one is a little maybe worn down and curlers do use their trailing foot to adjust speed as they come out of the hack. Whoa. And sometimes to act as a rudder to Seven, steer you in one direction the, or the other. Whoa, not yet. And just Scott was no, just not, not comfortable. Well, he Whoa. said he came out like a rocket and just couldn't slow down. And this is a rarity to see two misses by Scott Pfeiffer on the same end. And, and they've not been close either. That's that's the real surprise. No, my love. Good. Still trying to make some adjustments to the shoe. The glue it or what? With the type of shoe they're wearing, uh, the Asham shoe, there there are discs on the sole of the shoe that that they can change or attach by Velcro. They just take one disc off and attach a different type of material. So. Actually, you just buy one pair of shoes and then you just switch the sliders and the grippers from shoe to shoe. Very uh, great idea, but uh, Scott's having some is issues with his, with his shoes today. Very unusual, actually, to have an equipment malfunction like that. And now Germany lies four. And Germany has the hammer here. This is, this is not a good situation right now for, for Team Canada. Yeah, all right. Just tap this in then, eh? Okay. The only good news is those three Even Canadian guards. Shot, eh? Yeah, I know, that's fine. 
Well, the other good news is that the shot stone is directly behind the tee line. If Canada can get one in there, tap, he's playing a tap on his own here, and sit in front of the shot stone, then it, it'll negate all those other red stones that are sitting around the outsides. This is a tough, tough situation, though, for Randy Furby. Nine. Nine's good, then. Yep. Nine. Oh. Ten. Oh. Nine. Yep. Yep. Hard. Pfeiffer and Rock hard. really working on this stone hard. by hard. Randy hard. Furby. Is it going to curl hard. too much? Hard. 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 It is. Jesus. Well, it came down nine just ten, inside yeah. that four-foot line. They were talking about a 9-10 which would have been uh, back eight, back that 12 weight. To a little further out. And that's why they didn't call Sorry, it right away or anything. Oh, yeah, tons. Very messy situation for the Canadians right now. You can see all those red guard or yellow guards are all staggered. They can't be used by Canada. So now um, Germany is just looking to, to make a little tap on the outside of their redstone and move the one redstone over to the center line and take away the only tap that's available for Canada right now. Just looking for T-line weight. Trying to hit the outside of those two yeah. redstones that are frozen together. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa, young! No line right now. Whoa, 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 whoa. Didn't move it enough. Five now. Germans lying five. So that tap is still available here for Furby's, Randy Furby. You still got all this if you want. As you can see this is the this is the tap. Would like to just bring it in and get one in front of that red zone. You can see that he's talking about uh, doing something with those guards, but this is the this is the easiest shot. They really only need to move it a foot to count all those red stones in the 12 foot. And if the line's good, you take it right to the butt. I was thinking like this. If you hit this just off nose, I think you double these two out. This one should stick in here somewhere, and this one should stick in too. What if I don't? If you don't hit it where you need it? it What's worse than here? It happens, it hangs out. We got to bump twice with yours. We got this outturn come around too. I still like so the bump. you like tapping that? I think so. OK, all right then. I mean, we move it a foot, it's not bad, right? Yeah, I mean, we put it right in there. Yeah. Sure. Just tapping this stone into the eight foot. Well, Oh, and it's buried. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, well, last day. well buried. And the other uh, good thing about this situation is what he said is that the other turn is available as well. There still is an out turn freeze to get to that four foot yep. for Canada. Oh. Hey. I think this is the yep. call. They just they need to ten, make a, ten, a good ten, shot ten, here. Ten, eleven. Eleven's heavy. Hard. But they have to get it past the guard. Are they going to be by? Just by. But they tap it to the back of the 12 foot, and it is third shot, I believe. They're calling the whole way that that one was back 12 weight. They had to sweep it to get it past the guard. It's tough to get a Dover curl there, actually. Very, a little bit straight. unlucky. Yeah. How come your first one came down? Is it coming down? I don't know. I, well, An handicap is, is going to leave the bump again. He's Whoa. trying to tap his own stone yeah. into the top in eight foot. Whoa! Just in course! Whoa! No fear! Whoa! Spielplatz! 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 Trying to bump the outside one now. Okay, good. Well, they bumped the outside one, and it's now I Germany lying it. three. It might even be four. But again, the tap is still available. 
They were trying to take away that top by, as I said before, hitting the outside of those two red stones that were frozen and kick one over. They just uh, unsuccessful twice to make that shot and take away this, this tap for Canada. Yes, the red stone on the uh, left of the 12 might be fourth shot. Again, Dave Nedowin, you don't, the mistake by Randy Furby there wasn't the line, it was the weight. He threw it an 11, which is through the rings. This needs to be only in the eight foot. It'd be great to get Shaw Rock, but you need to, you need to count out all of those red stones around the rings. Yes. <laughs> and again, will the guard on the center line come into play, or are they going to be able to get it by? Just trying to tap back. And what a beautiful touch by David Nedowin. Wonderful shot, and again, great brushing to hold the line. That guard was a factor. They had, they had to get it by the guards in the, in the front of the house. Good result. A little, a little tighter, you slide just a smidge tight. Or yeah, that only is my slide. Maybe it's not slide, just not getting it. Yeah. Yeah. man dazu haben. Dass man den, den Winkel nicht haben. Und mit dem kriegst du ihn raus. Dass du Double, auf den Double ja, gehst. Mit dem kriegst du ihn raus. Selber, dann will ja, aber ich würde machen. Absendung rein. Talking yellow, yellow. Double. Was schau dir? Das Problem ist bloß, dann hat er den, dann legt er dreimal. Aber dann legt er dreimal. Dann legt er dreimal. Also dann hat er danach den und legt dreimal hinten drin. Yeah, the danger of driving in an opposition stone is, of course, you could, could leave two in play. He must have a guard and then he's out to. But you can't try it. It's just that the situation is a little harder. But the best is left hinten. As it was. We're going to three times. Okay, let's play. Uh, ich zeige ihn hinten an. Ja. Wie lange? Runback. Runback. Running back, the so. yellow under the shot stone, belonging yep. to Canada. Andy and Uli were just talking about what's going to happen if when they do peel these out and they think they'll still lie three. This one, this one, and this one. Assuming the one on the back of the button goes. So this is the reason they're playing the yellow straight back. Yep. Although Canada is lying one, it is lonely in there. <laughs> yep. Yes, with all those uh, red stones in the rings, but this one might be tight to the guard. Are they going to get it by? Yes, they do, but Canada still has shot rock, and it's even better protected now. Well, I think as we look at these angles when everything, the dust settles, I don't know that there's any raises available either to the Germans. That? that remind you a little of Randy Dutame at the Briar? <laughs> <laughs> this way's pretty safe right now. But does he have this is what I was wondering. I don't think so. Yeah. No, Trying to you know what what's he's available right to the Germans. He's got this number four on the nose. Well, that's what I'm saying. We've got to get another one in here, whether it's this way or this way. Right here. I mean, the other option is just guarding this, too. Well, then you're risking yeah. making something. Okay. Like right this. now, it's tough to score this way. Right here, here. Eight foot. If anything, got to be T-line. If it's wide open, eh? T-line back. Scott Pfeiffer talking to Marcel Rock about where this stone needs to be to not allow any double opportunity for the Germans. As long as they get to the T-line, there'll be no double. Right here. This stone in front of the T, they need to get their stone back behind the T-line, yeah, even if it's wide open. Or alternatively, if it's burying lovely, the top eight foot, top four foot behind those guards is going to work for them too. Eight, seven, eight. Well then, just for line. Eight, nine. Line's by. Nine. Well, we're by. We're by. Line only. Well, we'll just peel. Well, let's come down a bit, Scott. We'll, 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 side by side is good. Canada lies too. That's true. 
Is there any way that they can get the shot stone? Well, they're taking a look at the, the angles off onto the right-hand side. And 100%. I think they're looking at, you know, if you come across the face oh, the of that rock that, uh, that Andy's well, pointing well, to well, right well, now. Nine. 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 I'm trying to drive it, uh, come across the face and drive it in. Uh, I don't know if there's enough room to do that. They were looking that if they, if they came as close as they can over here and driving this this stone over, that they might be able to get shot stone. That's what they're looking at, see if there's enough room to come all the way across the face of that red stone. If they're able to double two yellows out again, it's going to be a score of three or possibly four for, for Grimby. I said, I, it's, I don't know that there's enough room to get by those guards and hit it thinly enough onto that stone at the top of it. There's very little option, though, here for Andy Cap. I think he, may, he has to try it. Du triffst maximal hier. Ja, das ist nicht lange. Passt da. Checking all the angles. Wie lang? Welches Eis? Well, Mike, you, you know, you talk about, does he have to try it? Well, no, he could draw down to the rock that Dave Nedowin just threw and, and gave up a point. By playing this shot, he's playing dangerously that he can give up two. Another option that he hasn't looked at is, is uh, coming yeah, across the face already. of his own and, and yeah. running it onto a stone to the top eight foot and spinning it in. But I, I think you're right, Joan. I think the outturn to this shot is fairly easy to give up one. Yep. Well, there is the danger if he miscues here that he could give up two. Final stone at the end. Canada lying two. Andy Cap leading by a score of 3-2. Trying to Whoa. raise his own yeah. into the rings. He drives it harmlessly by, and Canada will steal a deuce. So for the first time in this opening draw, Canada has the lead. A steal of two, and it's 4-3. Randy Furby over Andy Cap. This is the final shot by Andy Cap attempting to get to the shot stone. A very difficult shot. He caught a good portion of it, but not quite thinly enough. And it's a steal of two. A big chance there taken by Andy Cap. That was a very, very difficult shot to get one. And as we had drawn out to you, uh, an easy shot to just give up the one point. Now Germany is behind the eight ball, and that is uh, their, their no. domination of this game has now ended. They are Three. one point behind and need to count to, to, to get the lead back. So a discussion among the four members of Team Germany as to some of the strategy they will attempt to employ over the final four ends of this opening round match. Okay. I like what? I like your guard. So do I. Well, yesterday, the Alberta Sports Awards were presented in Banff, and the male athlete of the year, the man who won the gold medal in the floor exercises in Athens, Kyle Schufelt, the female athlete of the year, a cyclist Lorianne the Munzer, and the team of the year, and this is no big surprise, the Randy Furby team. As a team, the fourth time they have won the briar for Randy Furby individually, it's his sixth briar win three times, or twice. He, corner, yeah. he was uh, third for yeah. Pat Ryan back in 88 and 89. So Randy Furby and his team receiving another honor team of the year in the province of Alberta. It'll be interesting to see now Randy Furby with a one point lead, whether he hits this stone in the rings. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, almost. Hitting. Uh, he does. No, it's not going to go a whole pile. What am I throwing for weight? You can throw a bumper up. Yeah, bumper up. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Easy ish. Close. Whoa. whoa. Clean. Whoa. Whoa. Canada's second opponent on this opening day will be Sean Becker of New Zealand, and this is really a surprise. 
that Becker is leading Eric Carlson of Sweden by a score of 6-2. Carlson, after defeating Pea Lindholm to uh, win the right to represent Sweden, was considered to be a very definite threat. Five five Australia, Hugh Milliken, and the United States Pete Fenson. And four one, Switzerland is leading Denmark. Okay. Did not want to roll off on this freeze attempt. Will will allow Canada to continue to play very comfortably. Hitting the open stone. They're going to try to nose at this. They don't want to roll behind the T line. Can't really afford to give the Germans a chance to play a freeze. Well, David Nedowin slipped and fell, and he was very fortunate that he did not burn the running rock. <laughs> what else is going to happen this game to Team Canada? I knew you would. <laughs> Both Marcel Rock and Dave Nedowin with big smiles uh, after the miscue. Watch this. He, he caught his foot on the sideboard. And that sideboard is made out of uh, foam. Because it's a foam, and it actually, it'll yes. really grab. It'll grab your foot or your, uh, oh. or your broom. Yes. I might have tripped on that once or twice before in my career oh, as well. Hey. Whoa, whoa. Pretty good freeze, actually. Yeah. Not shot stone. The Randy Ferguson will ignore it. Go around. Scott Pfeiffer been struggling with his draws, particularly his outturn draw, asking for one here. Randy is. Seven. Where is it? Overthrown seven. several outturn draws eight. this game. Seven. Seven. Oh. Eight. Eight. Oh. Eight. Eight. Yep. That looked like yep. it picked something up. Five. Oh. That was the indication that it picked something. Canada tonight will play New Zealand. You'll see the game on Country Canada beginning at 9.30 Eastern time. Sean Becker, the only native New Zealander on the team. Three other members, all ex-Canadians. So that's the game. Draw two, Canada, New Zealand, Country Canada, 9.30 Eastern time. Germany now lies two as Ax Axnick gets rid of the uh, shot rock belonging to Canada. And the stones are close together, yeah. but very, very tricky double. double. Nose ain't the worst. Pick no. Pick. He's done yeah. no double. Nose ain't the worst, but I if I make the roll, I'm going to Like, it feels way more. Play the roll. Well, when they captured the 2005 Briar in Edmonton, they became the first team to win four Briars with the same lineup. Bumper! Oh. Bumper! Bumper! Yep. Oh, oh! Bumper! Yep, 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 hard! Hard, 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 hard! hard. Heart. Tapping back the shot stone sitting right there. Uli Cap with a slight edge on Randy Furby in percentages at third stone. Another chance here for Germany to hit and lie two. And they do. And the angle's not conducive to a double here still for, for Team Canada, so either Dave Netto or Randy Kirby is going to need to make a roll behind that center guard or 
at least over towards the other two stones on the outside and change the angles up a little bit for Germany. And don't want to nose hit this stone. Looking to roll to the inside. And they roll to the edge of the forefoot, protected by the two yellow stones out front. There is a port available. About half, that stone's about half buried. Good look at it there. So the Uli Cap is being asked to tap that rock to the back 12 foot. If they come close to the guard, try to get as close to the face as they can. Will move in this ball. We saw this in the first end when Germany scored their two points. Now as it hits the hog, it should start to move. It may move too much. He may be on the guard. Not bad. Didn't get shot stone, but rolled in. <coughs> yeah. All right. Let's go around there then. No choice. No. Ja, ein bisschen neig gestoppt da. Ja, die 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 ziehen irgendwann fangen sie zu ziehen an. Ja. Aufpassen. Zu wenig kannst du den fast nicht nehmen. Ja? Zu wenig kannst du den da fast nicht nehmen. Nee, nicht. Well, I guess the only way is like you said, you hit that and just roll the inside of here, but Randy, we can't get shot if we play that top one, can we? No. no. What? The only other shot is if we hit that red one and just roll in and sit to that way with a bumper. Yeah. Not the worst. Canada wants to get a second rock in the rings for second. Like the key here is to sit and not sure, no matter what. Leave a double for Germany. We could Germany. just hit that and flop in a hair and sit too. Well, you roll out, you're really hurting yourself because if oh, you miss it, if you miss the draw, at least you're still gonna have something to use, right? Yeah. Hypothetically. All right, they like. Ah, you the make this. Okay. It should finish late. Yeah. Okay, it should run straight. Just, just an interesting, interesting dy dynamic like here draw? at the beginning of the week. Huh? With, yeah. you know, if you miss yeah. the draw, if you miss the draw, you, if you miss the hit, you, you're going to do this. You will very rarely hear them talking in those terms, uh, Randy Ferbacine, but yeah. they're just going to play the outturn draw into the side of the forefoot, try to get one half around this stone, the top, top eight. And again, their goal is to get second shot and not leave the rock in a position where there's a double for Germany. Well, they always have so much confidence in David Nedwin's ability to make the draw. And again, a draw is a team shot, Mine's and good. that is a lot to do with those two sweepers there, Run. giving him uh, a very big range of error. Oh. Wait, it's can. Deep, Dan, deep. Key line elite. Go, go, go. Come on. Go get the double. <laughs> Trying to bring it deep because okay, it's okay. not varying. Okay, okay. Easy, guys. Where are we going? Too deep, they have double off the other one now. And although Canada is not sharp, Germany's made some, some good also, shots also and put also some also pressure on Randy Furby in this game. Yep. Two thirds is what they want to hit. And we're worried because this, of uh, Dave no Nettowen's rock not burying to leave it high and leave a double, but by sweeping it, they've now left the double off of the shot stone. And as doubles go, not, not real tough. And a double here would leave Germany lying three. They jumped on it Pass! immediately. Pass! Oh, 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 and yes. he'll nudge it back to lie three. Well done. And they're just very good hey, hitting team. Me. And uh, when, the, when the situation's simple and open. Good chance of making their shots. Yeah, this nice 
good news, look at where the shooter is. Behind the T-line, half buried. A freeze yep. opportunity is there for Dave Nedowin. And that's the call. <laughs> but high pressure, another high pressure situation here for the Canadians. Nedowin facing three German stones as he prepares to deliver his final rock of this seventh end. I miss you oh, here, and uh, they could set up the possibility of four. Hard line. Yep. Hard line. Seven. Hard. Hard line. The fans reacting as the two brushers really go to work in this stone. Are they going to get it past the top, Red? I don't think so. They get a rub. It's second shot. And now wide open. A chance for Germany, a hit for four. Schön in the nose, normal. Okay. Hinten haben wir auch Platz mit dem da. Ja, ja, das ist mir Fair to say, Team Canada not looking very comfortable in this game, not getting a good feel for the ice conditions early. When Dave Nedowin came down to throw that last draw, he was having a conversation with. Holger Honey from Germany talking about that gripper issue again. And this is his mindset as he's going down to throw a big pressure draw. They are distracted. They're not feeling comfortable. Well, Nadewin not at all pleased with the way he has performed in this opening draw. He was upset with himself back on the uh, second end when he missed the chance to maybe pick up a deuce. Just needs to curl a little. Looks good. Cleanly through to pick up four. Huge end for Andy Kapp and his team from Germany as they jump into a three point lead with three ends remaining against Team Canada. Well, we've become accustomed to watching Randy Furby and his. Breyer champions score four points. Rarely do they ever give up four. But a big four on the seventh end has Germany in a three-point lead with three ends remaining. Dave Nedowin, and you can tell by the look on his face, he's not happy with the way things have gone in this uh, opening draw. He's curling at 75%. Scott Viper is really struggling at 68 percent. It's very unpfeiffer like uh, a couple of uh, misses by him uh, that we we're not used to seeing him play under 90 percent but also I think more surprising is that they're making some sweeping errors as well with they're calling down numbers uh, 9 10 and the rock ends up being short. Uh, also, some sweeping errors on uh, getting rocks by guards and those kinds of things. We're, we're just not used to seeing that kind of play. Now, is that necessarily a bad thing? Your first uh, round robin game starting a world and not playing very good. It, it Sometimes it develops more focus and uh, makes the team really buckle down onto what they need to do to make more shots and win games. Well, after playing in the final of the Canada Cup, losing to Kevin Martin in Kamloops, the team took uh, about five or six days off without even going to the rink. And then they went back uh, and began throwing stones to get ready for this world championship. You wonder if maybe uh, it's going to take a couple of games for them to get back into top form. Well, it's, there's all sorts of things that distract you when you're at a championship like that. As you said, John, they, you know, is fatigue a factor? No, they did take some time and got rested up. Uh, I think a bigger factor is the pressure that they're putting on themselves. And I think, Mike, you said it right off the, the top. This yeah. team looks very uh, yeah. wound up. Yeah. They're, they're not relaxed. Uh, they're self-doubting. And all those things are happening uh, that we don't normally see from Furby's team. And I have great confidence they're, they're going to work it all out. But uh, certainly this, this opening draw, not as comfortable as what they'd like to be. We make a lot of stories about how great this team is, all four players, but the bottom line is they're human. 
and they have off games as yep. well. Level up. And uh, yep. unfortunately for them, Level their up. off games is, is at a world championship with everybody Level watching. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right, boy. Ready. Marcel Rock tapping those two German stones just a little deeper into nice the shot. rings. They want some backing in the in the house behind the T line. And the Germans now lie three, three with Oliver Axnick removing the Canadian stone. Yeah. A freeze called for. The stone sitting at the top of the eight foot. Part of Scott Pfeiffer's problems in this opening draw may be related to his footwear and uh, it looks as though he's uh, got another wide. At the end. Open miss. I don't know what happened there. What? You uh, let it go good and then it just, I don't know what happened there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, go back, go back. That's good. He was trying to freeze That's to the strange. stone on the left. I don't know what happened to that either. It looked like he threw the rock pretty well and then all of a sudden uh, the broom was on the center line. All of a sudden the stone was a foot off the center line shortly across the hot line. Watch him release. Whoa, nice and soft, Whoa. didn't point it away. And they all Whoa. they think that perhaps the Easy. that rock actually might have picked something that made it go off yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. for a little Whoa. bit off that center line before it started to curl back. Okay. And these are the kinds of things, you know, when <laughs> when things aren't going right, it seems to kind of snowball. And I, I spoke last <coughs> end about Dave Nedowin talking to the German team, and I thought it was about the gripper issue. Yep. And uh, I think it was about their stopwatches going off. When you're playing really well, you don't hear any of that stuff. The rocks look huge Whoa. down at the other end. And yep, you can make any nine, nine, shot in the book. But when you are struggling, everything seems to snowball and you get distracted by all sorts of things. Again, two misses by Scott Pfeiffer here on uh, the eighth end. Got Team Canada shaking their heads. Uh, they just don't know what's going on with their rocks. Calling bad line and everything. Let me call the line. So I don't know what happened to his first one. Well, I don't know, caught something or whatever, but yeah. still, he hasn't made nothing today. Zero. I set that up earlier today. I said Randy Furby calls a spade a spade. And you know, we, we talk about the, the whole team being guests with Scott Russell and, and calling all Canadians. They will be uh, they will be laughing and joking after this game. Uh, no matter what the situation, they will leave it out here. They'll have a, a little post meeting with their coaches, get it all out on the table, and then they'll move on. Well, I mean, you could do this, right? And sit here. Or else, uh, could do this. Uh, yeah, but if it don't make it, that's a No, I know. It's a waste of shot. Set, how, how do we set this up for a deuce? Either hit and roll or, or, or freeze on that, perfect. Oh, what about just bumping it back here? Yeah, I mean, that's the shot. We're not going to be shot, though. You know, because the guard is gone. Unless, we, unless right on the nose. But, we, uh, but our shooter could be this one out, and then that's the only one that shot, so. Or else what? Well, this. Then he's only got a tiny little run. Well, I know, but then, then we have the run. Then we have the cover. Well, no, but that. that oh, wow. I don't know. I, I think I play a freeze on this thing. I think so, too. And if you bump it a hair yeah. right here, it's not bad. Yeah. Well, trailing by three, the uh, Canadian team desperately has to manufacture at least a no, deuce freeze. here on uh, yeah. end number eight. Yeah. Just trying to figure out the way to do that, and uh, they've decided to play a little freeze, and if the line's uh, not great, they may want to tap this stone to the back eight. It was a good conversation. How do we how do we generate Where two out of this mess? <laughs> and really, because those Line rocks line. are in front of yep, the T line bump, bump. and in the eight bump. foot, uh, bump. it's it's going to be very hard for them to generate something. Nine, nine, ten. Yep, yep. 
And that's what I'm, I, that's the point that I'm making earlier. They're miscalling some of these uh, draw shots as well. It's not normal for this team to make that many mistakes about where the weight is going to. A 9 10 is at the back of the house. That rock came way down and overcurled. Germany's lying three right now, and uh, they're just going to peel the corner guard out. Willie Cap will also take out one of his own. It was fourth shot. Sit one and three. You make the double, sit one and three. And if you hit a little thick, we roll here. Either that or the freeze. On this one? This one. I kind of like getting rid of one of theirs. We're going to have to eventually. Oh, For that other one to count. You've got a few options with that other one. You hit and roll behind the guard, you hit and roll freeze, or you hit and roll double. Yeah, I think so. Hit and roll, Dave. That really went there. You heard all the options. This this is a good call. It's it's uh, removing shot stone. You can roll in underneath the red rock on the center line. You can make a double. Easy up. Uh, there's lots of options here. Yep. Yep. Oh, oh, oh. Well, initially Dave Nedowin said sitting one and three wouldn't be bad. Gotta stick around. Well, they could be looking at three when David Nedowin throws his first stone of this end. Well, even if it's only two, he's still going to be forced to one. And, uh, and the, the mistake there is that you have to have this rock over curl and hit and stay at least. They actually swept that stone early in the in the delivery. Yeah. It really wasn't close to staying at all. Yeah. For a little less ice. And they're talking about nose hitting it, the Germans are. Germany lies three. As you can see. Either turn. We threw both turns. Not now turn trying right to use yeah. the rock that's in the top eight foot as a guard and try to hide in behind it. Very, very comfortable situation for Germany right now. <laughs> Even if Canada does get into that back four foot and get partially buried, uh, Germany will have access to it uh, to tap it out or a short little run back. This one isn't close for line. Well outside. Wide open. Shot stone, but uh, it's available to Andy Cap. And David Nederwin, when he throws his final stone of this eighth end, could be looking at four. I think the expressions on the faces of yeah. the members of the Canadian team pretty much tell the story of this opening draw. Very quiet, too. When they stole the deuce on the sixth end, it looked as though they had finally turned things around in a game in which they have trailed from the outset. But Germany came right yeah, yeah. back with a four. On the seventh ah! end, as the result of several ah, Canadian ah, misses, ah! and Germany is going to be lying four yeah. again as David Nedewin prepares to throw his final stone. 
So the Germans sweeping that hard, trying to roll it out of the way so there's no backing for Dave Nedewin. And all credit has to be given to Germany. They have played very, very well this game. When, when Canada put that huge amount of pressure on them in the fourth end with three rocks biting the button, Andy Cap draws to, to the button to get his point. This is a very, very good team, and they are, are certainly sending a message here today in the opening draw. David Nadewin drawing against four. The final stone of the eighth end. Canada trailing by a score of 7-4. This is curling. They thought it was an eight. That's what Scott Pfeiffer called out, which would be back four. And they get it to the top of the button for a single point. But they're still talking about the residue from a gripper that is uh, changing the ice. It's a two-point game with two ends left. Well, Canada has led just once in this opening draw, but it was a short-lived front-running experience as the Germans came back with four on the seventh end, and they lead by two with two ends remaining. During the break, the Canadian team still talking about those gripper problems and how one rock would run a little differently than another. David Nedewin saying he thought twice he had thrown exactly the same weight, the same line and everything else, but the rock reacted differently. And it's the uh, gripper being worn by Holger Honig that seems to be causing some problems. I, I'm, I would venture a guess that it's the rock because you think about Dave Nedewin's last shot in the seventh end when they gave up the four, came up light, tighter. The last draw here came up light and tighter. It's not, it's a recurring theme here and it's along different paths and I think Canada's looking, again, lack of focus here. They're, they're just not, they're not playing well and they're trying to find a way to explain what's going on on the ice. But, uh, you know, they're not completely out of this game. The two ends play, four rock rule. They're going to get two center guards here in nine. And they're going to get another two in ten. So they, need to they definitely need to steal here. They're going to go Three. all out no, one. One for to steal a point and ignore oh. all the German stones in the range and do what they need to do to steal one. And whether there is gripper marks on the ice or not, both teams have to deal with that. And it, it, if you do believe that there is little bits on the ice, then you better be yep. meticulous with cleaning the path of the stone. And uh, they can't let this become a distraction that prevents them from doing what they are here to do, and that yep. is make every one of their shots. Easy, Jungs. Easy, Life. 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 Yep. Genau der, ja. Okay. Dann Augi. Augi. Ja, da. Well, you made reference earlier to how well the German team is playing, Joan, and uh, every member is over 80%, Andy Cap at 88%. Scott Pfeiffer at 66% for Canada. Marcel Rock is the top percentage of any of the players at 97%. Go. Hard. Hard. That's good. Oh boy. Let's go, Marty. But usually with uh, this Randy Furby team, you don't see such discrepancy in statistics from one player to the other. Usually they're all very consistent. It just shows you the importance of every position on the team and, and against very good teams. You can't afford to have a weakness and uh, today it's been Scott at second. And as well, I think they're struggling with uh, Dave Nedewin's stones. That second stone that he's throwing has come up tight and light about four times in this game. They're struggling with something, Mike. I'm not sure if it's the stone or not. These guys play so much that you'd, you'd think that they would come up with that uh, uh, consistency if it was a, a rock. I don't think it's that bad. Line's good. No room. A lot of room. Out here before, I know. Getting better. 
We need the center line if you can. Right on the tee. Uh, it's got to occur a lot still. We've talked about this before. When you're trying to steal, it's not yep, important yep, to get buried necessarily, yep. but you need to get the stone into go, 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 a guardable go, go, go. position. Go, go. Full four right, foot right, touch in the butt, and that is exactly what they're looking for. Even though it's not buried, Germany has to deal with that stone. They'll get a chance to get one buried later in the end. Oliver Axnick has those two Canadian guards to contend with as he goes after this shot stone. Looks pretty good. Germany lies three. Yeah. Oh. 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 Lighter weight than he was looking for. It's a discussion. Ten. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ten. Okay. Ten. We need a ten. Clean. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. Coming down. Plus. Nine. Get Barry. Plus. Whoa. Yep. 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 Hard, hard, hard. Whoa. Eight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa. Nice shot, Scott. Clear. Okay. It's now the same shot available for Oliver. Baby ice. Okay. Same ice, same weight. He was quite tight to the guard with his previous stone, but he had to be to make the nose contact. He's going to be tight to the guard again. It's got more weight this time. So it will roll off. Okay. And that's fine. Whichever way you want. Mine, uh, Again, put the pressure back on Canada to get one completely buried here for all and not accessible to Germany. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm we're saying that's great. Gone. But if we need to go so back to bury it, that's okay. Clean this side, I clean this side. That. You clean it all the way. Simple out turn draw. The key is, Dave mentioned, even if it's back Suck T it line, in, right? get it buried. We've watched this out turn several times. It'll run straight for a very long ways and break late in its path and line. really curl hard at the very good. end. Which good. Yep. Six, seven. Trying to bury this behind the two stones sitting out front. Will they get it past the second? To the button to lie shot. Wonderful finish. Once again, good brushing. Talking about whether to play the peel or the run. They said, let's try the run back. Why not? Okay. And if we happen to get the double peel, that's great. Yellow, yellow onto the right onto that stone on the button is the call. Double would be a good result, though. Double the two guards away. Huli Cap attempting to run back. A Canadian stone onto another Six. Canadian rock onto the shot stone. First contact, and he drives it into two of his own, and Canada now lies two. Big break for Canada. Okay. That's, that is a big break. Andy. Again, the, the only good news here for Germany yeah. is that even if they score one here, they'll have a three-point lead going home. So they're just going to try to find a way to score a point. That stone at the full eight foot shouldn't come into play for Germany. He makes the double, you come around. I think we have to go up here. I don't think this double's here, do you? No. 
I think I gotta go up here. Okay. And then I'll go around here. Do you want to go here? It's not there. Herb? That double's not there. Out here? He does. I mean, come around. Thank you, guard. They're going to play a guard, and at some point, they're going to try to come around this guard. They're hoping that Germany won't make a double peel on the guard that's going to be thrown. Still not uh, time to panic yet for, for Germany. They just, they're one good double away from getting out of trouble. Three stones to come. Got a nice situation for Canada and, and putting some pressure in, on Germany. Like this guard to be fairly high and make the double peel as difficult Silver. as possible. Yeah, a little bit. Just for line two, Whoa. split center. Split Andy center. Caps fooled us a couple times this game where he's played center draws line. when we thought he might play a, a peel. Good. Good. See what he thinks here. That is not an easy double. Those stones are lined up directly. And that's Joshua. why they swept it there. They swept it to split the center line so that the double peel would not be easy. Okay. All good. There's the call. Okay. Well, kind of hoping he'd hit again. What's that? Kind of hoping he'd hit again. So did I. It was a game. I, I, I think we had to. I mean, I guess we could have maybe went in with the. I don't know. Maybe we could have went in. Could have gone in. Well, there was anticipation, as you heard, that Cap might attempt to hit again after Kirby threw yes. his last stone, but. Right. They've opted Up. for the draw Up. down Up. to the shot stone from Uli Cap. Well, if you knew what your opponents were going to play, the Up. game was very Up. easy. <laughs> Will they get past the guard? They rub. Canada still lies, too. And there's two guards still out front. Uh, the only good news for Germany is that stone is usable. Okay, okay. Hilft da nichts. Mein das Risiko ist immer vor Eingang, wenn man da drauf geht, man muss anders spielen. Dass der so geht. Der macht nichts aus. Der darf halt nicht angehen. Die Frage jetzt, weil wenn jetzt wieder kommt er hin oder noch? Ja. Now, because that tap hey, is available on the rock that Uli Cap just throw, threw, Canada will now try to come in. They have two guards already. So they're trying to get tucked in behind the two guards right into the forefoot. Seven, six. Six! It's for line. Three. One only. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. Seven. Hard! Hard. Good wait. Should came, came down. down again? Well, yeah, picked or something. I don't know. Oh. Dave Nedwin is uh, somewhat mystified by the way his rocks are reacting. It's, it's hard to say what's going on with the ice. They, they are thinking there might be uh, little bits out there that rocks are picking, although I'm not seeing a lot of sudden movement. I've also played on ice conditions where it's very tracky and it, uh, it's almost like an air circulation problem that there's certain spots that are heavier than others. Um, we've also played in ice conditions in arenas where it gets heavier down the forefoot line, down the, the slide, pa slide path ar area. They have to take in all the information they can and try to figure out why some of those rocks are dying uh, or not sliding as far as what they think in certain spots. That's uh, part of the joy of playing in an yeah, arena in the opening weekend. And, and uh, again, no advantage to any one team here. All the teams are trying to deal with the ice, and, and they learn as the week goes on. And hopefully you learn to deal with it better than the other teams do as the week goes on. And we saw Jennifer Jones struggle with that same issue, although different conditions, in Paisley last week. An angle raise attempt on his own stone to the shot stone on the button by Andy Cap, And it's right on target. He'll get them both. Great shot. Good call by Uli Cap as well. Those are hard to call. Perfect. 
And as I said, Germany continuing to look so good in this game. Not just the run back, but the run back double. And Andy in particular just made three or four huge shots. So now Canada still has guards to draw around, still has an opportunity to steal. They will want to come in and get into this button area so right behind those cards. And uh, this is fine. Yeah. and try to push this Germany. Okay. Actually playing a lightweight I mean, tap. Draw, you know? yep. Playing an, an 11 just yeah, through the there. rings, try to roll buried. A single point here will be enough for Germany to, to need, for Canada to need Germany to miss in the 10th end. A three point lead. Loving up. You know, if you make all yep. your shots, you're going to win Love the game. Up. Up. Oh. Love it up! Yeah. There's Five. Netherlands' final Five. stone Five. here Five. on Five. nine. This is curling Five. as well. Five. Five. Well, they're going to be shaking hands after this end. Draw for three. Just a struggle this entire day for Randy Kirby and his team. Okay, guys. Andy Cap. <laughs> an opportunity to score his first ever victory against Randy Furby. And, well, the Furby team has not been as sharp as we have seen them on many occasions in the past. Take nothing away from Team Germany. They have all played well, particularly the skip, Andy Cap. <laughs> A chance to draw for three here in the ninth end. Wunderbar is right. Thanks. A great opening victory for Team Germany as they hammer Canada by a score of 10 to 5. Well, all the work that the German team did in prepping for this season certainly pays off here on the opening draw at the World Championships. 10-5 will be the final score. Team Germany defeating Randy Furby and his Canadian champions. Their second game coming up this evening against New Zealand. Opening draw, the Ford World Championships in Victoria, British Columbia. Well, Germany got to take on the giant first, and they did the job. 10-5 victory for Andy Kapp over Randy Furby of Canada. And here is Andy Kapp, a first-ever victory for your team over Randy Furby. Uh, first of all, how satisfying is that? Uh, you know, we played pretty well. So it's not satisfying winning against Randy Furby, but to win the first game against Canada, hometown and homeland, and it's always a big curling nation for us. We are just a small curling nation, so it was really nice. Obviously, uh, your team was on the mark today. What was it about uh, the club's performance? Did you have your draw weight? Uh, was the strategy right? What was it that made the game? I think both the guys really played well, my guys, and they just some terrific shots. So, and we had one really hard draw in the in the fourth end and we made it could, could have been the other way around and I think it was a good performance of us. Andy, uh, thanks for this and uh, good luck the rest of the way. Thanks. Andy Cap of Germany, a victor today. Don? Well, he talked about the hard draw and indeed it was in the fourth end. He was looking at three stones all touching the button. With his final stone, he had to get a good piece of the button with his draw. He did, and rather than Canada stealing a possible three and taking the lead, it was a 3-1 advantage at the point for Germany. And Andy Cap himself, an outstanding 88%. Now, again, here's Scott with Randy Furby. Thanks very much, Don. And uh, here is Randy Furby, as you say. Uh, what's your read on this one? Well, it, wasn't, it wasn't very good. It wasn't a, you know, we're, we never showed up to play at all. They, they outplayed us. They uh, made, a lot of, made a lot of good shots. Uh, our team was very, very poor that game, to be honest with you. And uh, thank God it's only the first game and not the last game. Is this, uh, 
in any way. Uh, a case of uh, huge expectations. Everybody, you know, wants everything right out of the gate, and it's going to take a little bit of time to get rolling. Well, ma maybe a little bit, but but we've been here, done this before. It's uh, you know we put a lot of expectations on ourselves, and this game's no different than the Briar or Provincials or what it, what we've gone through in the last five years. We just got to be better prepared for this uh, for uh, what what we did today. You've had an awful long grind this season. Is the team tired? Uh, is there any motivation problem? No, we're, we're the World Championships. You know, we, we've got 12, 13 games left. Ho hopefully, it's if we can't get motivated for that, we got a problem. Uh, yes, we are tired a little bit, but uh, that's definitely not an excuse. What about the ice? Uh, the ice was a little tricky. There was a, there was there was a few concerns that I have that I won't get into right now. But uh, it, it it it's it's got to stop by the end of the week here, or, or by the next game, or else we're going to have a real real major problem. Thanks, Randy. Good luck. You bet. Thank you, Randy Furby of Canada. Don. Well, I think the concerns he was talking about, gripper problems uh, on the ice with uh, it affecting it? some of the Canadian zones at least that was the feeling now let's swing over Australia and the United States Hugh Milliken no, wait on it, who wait calls on it, the game but throws yep. third Hard. stones Hard. and Hurry. it's a six six tie And Hugh Milliken just drawing down to that American zone. Amer Aussies have the hammer here in yeah, 10. Yeah. Oh, they can't guard both sides. Ian Polangio throws uh, skip stones for the Australian team, and it's behind cover now. What's Milliken, what's uh, an ex-Canadian, born in North Push Vancouver. Shot. Played second for Dave Van Dyne. When they won the Canadian Mixed Championship in Kamloops in 1986. We got it over here. He's got to pick it. We go right here. The U.S. throwing the red stones here. They are shot stone. I don't know. He is way under there. But does not have know. last rock here in the 10th well, end. Well, mine don't do that. I mean, mine off cut, but. You know, if you got it, moved it, you know, two or three inches would be better. But you know, also don't. Can't go buy it and do this with ours though either. Where's the perfect place? The problem the Americans face is that there's two options for That's Australia. They can bump it. their own yellow onto shot stone or they can simply oh. pick the red stone out of there. So I think yeah, the best I option as they're talking about is to move that pick. Australian stone That's to the back easy. of the forefoot and, and lie two. Very tough. If we can freeze the ours, can if we can freeze the ours, we can get in his way here, can't we? Where you can't quite get to our rock, but it's you know who says He no just one. hits it. Does he? I think we gotta move both of ours out and keep the shooter around somewhere, you know? Boy, I, don't I just know. think this is way too easy here. Well, they're both too easy. But I, wanna, I don't, I don't want to make it for him, though. How about this? If he throws the same guard and we just move it a fraction each other, that's probably our best like shot that? there. What do you got? Delicate shot because he's way, I mean. Well, the freeze is, is too. What? No, I'm just yeah. I like that Try call. That. Split the guards a foot. Make that tough on him. Yeah. Right. Almost, we almost, we leave him a hole, we hardly leave him anything. He's got to throw a draw tap. Let's try that. Okay. Yeah. Where was I? The last time we were just right here. No, we didn't want to touch. Get me out there. We just want to touch it, okay? We just want to touch it. We're just moving him. Move couple it to inches. here. No, more than but a couple we inches. Can, we got to move it. Right to there. Eight. And stay there, okay? Now this is a difficult shot too. It's splitting the guard just a, a foot or That's so. That's where we were, right? So we that it right covers here, both of those shots that you were talking about, uh, Mike. Maybe uh, in my okay. opinion, there is only one other shot. They're just trying to just touch this guard over more, just right? a little bit so that there's two and it covers both of these stones in the, in the house. In my opinion, there is only one other shot and that is trying to make a play on the yellow stone. And he was very concerned that if he did come down with like back four foot weight and make make that shot for Australia, he didn't like that either. If this shot is made perfectly, Hugh Milliken will have very little on his last shot. But the, the key word here is yes, perfectly. Yeah. He will have to have very, very little weight. It's a it's a high guard and can't oh, roll off line. very far with his shooter. Well, I'm not saying it's easy. Got it's, tap <laughs> it's tough, oh, oh, very, very yeah. tough shot. Yeah. This is the fourth appearance oh, oh, at a world championship yeah, for yeah, Pete Fence yeah. and the American skip oh, from Bemidji. Oh, 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 it's over for 
Sterling. He's going to push it straight back. Good enough. So now. I don't think that is good enough. I think that the shot stone is now no available on either That's side. Both options are still there, definitely. And the option they've chosen is the outturn tap. And really, it's just a line shot. Weight is not an issue. Anything on the outside of that top stone with T-line, back four, back eight foot weight will score. Could almost throw a hit at it same. if they wanted. Well, for Australia, no, this would be a great like start so to the competition like if they were able to score no, a victory. Mm -hmm. Ian Palagio, who is a native of Orangeville, Ontario, he throws fourth stones as Hugh Milliken skips the team. Team has been in Calgary for the last uh, couple of heavy. weeks preparing. Yep, yep for line. Yep, hard, hard for line, hard, hard for line. line. Hard, hard, Ontario hard, and Stephen hard, Jones working hard, hard, hard to get it past those two red stones hard, out front. Have they got hard, enough weight to hard. get it there to the shot stone? No, they rub out front. So the strategy pays off for Team USA as they. Uh, Congratulations, well done. Played a second guard and uh, well done. it Good results game. in a steal Thank of one on the 10th end and a 7-6 uh, victory and a sigh of relief for Team USA as Pete Fenson and company defeat Hugh Milliken of Australia by a score of 7-6. We'll be back with more after this. With the passing of Pope John Paul II, CBC News will present a news special that will follow the conclusion of our curling coverage today. As a result, we will not be able to present the feature Calling All Canadians that we had planned to bring to you with the Randy Furby rink. So that feature presentation will be cancelled as a result of the special news presentation on the passing of Pope John Paul II. The scores, Canada, Randy Furby losing 10-5 to Andy Cap of Germany. The United States coming from behind as Pete Fenson defeats Hugh Milliken of Australia by a score of 7-6. New Zealand, a big surprise as Sean Becker defeated Eric Carlson of Sweden 8-5. And Andreas Schwaller of Switzerland all over Johnny Fredrickson of Denmark winning by a score of 7-2. So that's the story of the first draw. And uh, checking the standings, Germany, New Zealand, Switzerland, and the United States atop the board. Finland, Scotland, Norway, and Italy have yet to play their first games in this 12-team field at the 2005 Ford World Men's Curling Championship in Victoria. We'll be back after this. The Ford World Men's Curling Championships on CBC. Brought to you by the original Strauss Heart Drops. Trust the tradition. By Karcher. You'll look for things to clean. And by Scott Paper Limited and its family of quality paper products. Tonight on CBC Country Canada, draw two from the 2005 Ford World Men's Curling Championship. Randy Furby and his Briar champions, losers of their first draw, 10-5 to Germany, taking on New Zealand as Sean Becker and company surprise Sweden by a score of 8-5. Three members of the New Zealand team, Hans Frauenlob, Dan Mustapik, and Lorne de Pape, all former Canadians curling for 29-year-old Sean Becker. So that's the feature game tonight on CBC Country Canada. Team Canada against New Zealand. Canada coming off the 10-5 loss. New Zealand defeating Sweden 8-5. For Joan McCusker and Mike Harris, I'm Don Whitman. Goodbye from Victoria. <laughs>